Hi, Tiny Home Fam. This is Lindsay, the Tiny Home Lady, and I want to share with you, this is the last video of Sierra, our tiny home, in its current state because we just got it rented. That's right. We are going to be um, handing it over to a wonderful woman and her team, Rachel, with Yokea Ranch, and it's gorgeous area. We just went and visited it yesterday. But we are going to be making some changes because where it's going to go, it is not going to have its current reality. Like what it's really been built for is so we can boondock. Like we can be fully off the grid and boondocking. Where it's going to go, it's going to be fully tapped into the grid and not, not moving around at all. But in a beautiful, beautiful setting. So I just want to give a last tour of the changes that we're going to make, but it's really cool. So let's go check it out. All right, so we've been in this amazing parking lot. Thank you, John. We are gonna be doing, right now it's still in development, a garage around the gooseneck. I haven't seen anything like that before, but as you can see, we put in these pegboards, so it could be like a workshop. You can, you know, put tools in here, you name it. So we built that. And then nothing really changed on the outside other than the garage. Um, the fridge is coming back in. Let's see, what has changed? The purple couch. There was a gray couch here before. Um, we did not do a butt test on it, and it did not pass the butt test. So we brought in this beautiful couch that my mom actually has owned for, I don't know, more than a decade, other than the doggy hair. It's still in, like, perfect condition and super comf. And then this might change. Like, these two little units might go away. Um, but we'll keep the desk there and there'll be a new chair. Um, obviously the bedding up here is going to change a little bit because, um, you know, and then obviously our books will come off. The mini split is actually going to go from there to there because I don't know if you guys know, but here, we'll look at my cool, um, Tahoe. This is late looking over Lake Aloha. Um, I took that on like an old iPhone, iPhone 4, but yeah, there we are. So our builder went bust in the middle of the build and we had to rescue our tiny home. We went from custom home to surprise DIY and we didn't know everything. No, we didn't. We didn't know that if you put the mini split at the very end of the tiny home, which seemed like a perfect thing to us, one, it blows on your face while you're laying there on the bed. Now, I'm sorry, but in really hot days, laying up here under the air conditioning is awesome. But it doesn't allow, even with the fan that's right here, it's not doing the job of like heating or cooling this whole home by any means. In fact, a home like this probably needs two mini splits for it to really heat or cool from it. Um, the cooling though, we found that that does work pretty well. The heater we've had to add another little heater on the ground. So we'll see how it's gonna go. We are gonna move it over there. It's a perfect location. Um, it'll at least get more, you know, more, uh, what do you call it, airflow down into the main home um, than sitting up there. And then you can even do like a cool shelving or just we'll leave it for right now. So I think that's pretty much it. Other than the bedding, that won't be changing. Um, they love, oops, they love the table right? The table that flips up um, underneath. So that table flips up and this little one sets inside that. You can see the cutout and six people can sit around the table. Very cool. Uh, let's see what else is changing. We might be taking out the toaster oven. I don't know. It's our only oven. I think there was a concern of energy and I think they solved that. So this may stay here, which is really nice because then you know, if someone does want to cook a pizza or whatever, um, these are people that are kind of more short-term rental, not Airbnb, but it is a short-term. Um, there could be a bride in here. So cool. I can't wait. Uh, we'll see if the baskets stay the same. I don't know. That's up to um, the crew. And then we are changing this out. Oh, yeah. That's a whole story. So I looked online. I saw an on-demand hot water tank that you know, was the eco temp, looked cool, matte, black, or whatever, black. It's not mobile certified. <laughs> so what happens when it's not mobile certified? It means 
the company did not test it. They didn't shake it like crazy because when this thing's driving, it shakes like crazy, right? Going down the road, it's like an earthquake condition. So we need to change it out. But we already bought the um, Easy Deluxe from, I think, Easy something, Easy Deluxe, D-E-L-U-X-E. Um, they sell them at Home Depot. We just bought ours for $522, just FYI. That is probably the one thing that most people don't really know much about. There's two factors. You can read one. For example, this one clearly said not for mobile applications. So it doesn't necessarily say RV certified or mobile certified in the installations. If it doesn't say anything about, it, you know, it cannot be used in mobile, sort of, you know, mobile applications, it will likely be RV ready or mobile ready. Um, or it will say this is for a mobile application. So a little confusing there <laughs> just because the Easy Deluxe in the installation guide did not say that it was okay for RV, but it surely did not say that you couldn't use it in an RV. So, and a lot of tiny home builders are using them. So go figure that out, right? Now, another interesting thing in here, we as a team have decided to either remove this toilet, which is a compost toilet, just so everyone knows the way you use it. You sit down and the solids in the back and number one in the front. And there's some, you know, you, in a normal toilet, you sit down, you do, you do your business. And this one, there's, there's some adjustments to make. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was fine with it. I, we lived, you know, we did just fine with it, but Random people come into the, mm -mm, no, not good. And who wants to clean the mistake, right? No one. So the cool thing is on the site of this next place we're going to be going to, they've got a whole powder room and toilet room and all that to go to. So, but the cool thing is they can use the shower. Um, you know, there'll be a gray water situation going on. So that's really cool. But yeah, the toilet, I don't know. We're figuring out, do we either like, cap it and cover it or remove it. My sense is to remove it because then you've got all this space for towels and I don't know, other bubbles. And then the cool LED light or LED light mirror. Um, that's not, that's staying. That's totally staying. Let's see what else we're going to, you know, be doing some touch up paint because this thing's hit the road. We're also going to be removing this onboard water system. So if I was to turn this on right now, Right, this whole thing does that. It was just running, you can see the water drip drip. So that runs when we're not connected to any kind of water, but we only put a 20 gallon tank under these stairs. Okay, we basically use about six gallons a day between the two of us, that's including showers, and dishes, now the days that we took showers or one time my husband even made a bath, we had to carry all of our water <laughs> for like six months. So it just is not big enough. You know, I get while it's good to have your freshwater tank inside in case for cold, cold climates, it could freeze. We don't go to cold climates and 20 gallons is not enough. Okay. For what we wanted, most bussers and you know, schoolies and all that, they have like a 50 minimum to a hundred gallon and they can pretty much last for about a week on that. And then they've got to move it and, and obviously fill it up. So those are the two things that are going to come out from underneath these stairs, which means that these stairs are going to get a total redo. We're going to have drawers coming out and the whole thing. So, but that's not critical right now. And then we come up here and this already did get a makeover. There was a Murphy bed in the back and now there is shelving. And these are super cool because I didn't want to like have to reach all the way back there. My husband put in these great sliders on all of them. We even did this really cool one where um, the reason why there's metal here is for files. That's right. We had one file drawer that people can use um, if they have files up here. Obviously, with renting it, you know, they may or may not, we may just make it a box. And then over here, what we'll probably do is remove these shelves and put in a bar there for closet, you know, for hanging clothes. And then what I love is our utility closet because there was just no room next to the fridge, which these are commonly found. Uh, there's literally not 
not, you know, there wasn't even that room. So I'm super excited to be able to tuck those away and we're going to have doors that cover them. And the cool thing is we used the uh, pallet wood and burned it and it's called Shusugiban. And we even did this to the table, the Shusugiban. And I love this little symbol. You know, you get all kinds of cool features, knots, you name it. So that is the pallet wood. You know, a lot of work, but free in terms of materials. And then we come around. Uh, let's see, we've got our sliding barn door, right? And that has been painted with, uh, what do you call it? Chalkboard paint. So they can write cool, you know, things on it. We'll probably have a little chalk thing there. And then this is going to get majorly makeover. We're going to actually have stairs that pull out because right now walking up straight steps is, is not conducive to our body. And then we're gonna be removing these, um, this whole set and the bar and the washer dryer combo and putting a bed in here. That's right, a full size bed. So two people can sleep here and then two people can sleep across there, making it a two bedroom and maybe even one on the, on the couch. Uh, we also have a a fold out kind of futon thing that could be stored here if they wanted to put more people inside, you name it. So that's really the, the kind of end of the tour and this is a change of time. We're gonna be taking out all of our personal items so that, oh, there we go. Eric's already oh, doing it. Go. Okay, here we go. Go, that's go, it. Go. The change is happening. So people might be like, well, where are you going? What are you doing? It was so. My parents have a home in Ukiah, California. And when we hit the whole shelter in place thing, um, we were on a property that we were told we had to leave because she was putting it up for sale. Well, then you know, the whole shelter in place happened in March and we ended up coming back to Ukiah and parking the home here in this parking lot right in downtown Ukiah. So we couldn't live in it, but we could live in my parents' house from October till May. Well, we ended up staying there through all summer. Thank you, mom and dad and my brother. My brother's house is right next to it, like a little accessory dwelling unit on the property. And we just really enjoy the whole family compound kind of vibra vibration. So this winter, now that they're in Tucson uh, in their home, we actually had the access to their home. And that means this home was sitting here unrented or un unlived in. And that's just like, that's not cool. On top of it, we own a Dodge Ram dually because we towed this tiny home 6,000 miles around the, around the country. Well, the Dodge is underwater. Like if we were to try to sell it for what we owe on it, it wouldn't pencil out. So we don't want to do that. And we need it to move this thing. So we ended up buying a cab over camper and we fell in love with Baja. So Cabo San Lucas area and up the coast and we are gonna be taking our cute little cab over camper down to Baja because in Baja, you don't have to wear scarves and jackets <laughs> and maybe light jackets, but you can be outside, you can create you know, outside kitchens and do all that because the cab over camper is tiny, tinier than this tiny. So that's the big shift and we're just really excited that this home is gonna to go to a good home and that people are gonna be able to like try before they buy, you name it. Um, we're gonna be putting out uh, information on how they can go and rent it and stay in it for the nights if you wanted to test out a tiny home. There's really not a lot of places to do that in Northern California. So ours will probably be one of the first that you can do that. I should take that back. East, Co I mean, on the, on the coast, there is that opportunity. But, you know, if you're on the 101, you want to go two hours north, you want to be in wine country, blah, blah, blah. There's really not a lot of options, but Sierra will be that option. So super excited. All right, you guys. And if you are interested in going tiny yourself, you've been dreaming of it, you really want to enter the planning stage and start designing your home. The important thing is choosing the right builder if you want to actually have a builder build your home. So we help people design their home as well as choose the right builder because we know <laughs> firsthand after our builder went bust in the middle of the build that it's wise to actually look around at different builders, but it's really great to have someone that's been there, done that. 
that has made all the mistakes you can possibly make, literally, I could, I have a list <laughs> of all the mistakes. So our clients that we're working with are getting their homes designed and we're about to enter a number of builder analysis for each of them. Uh, we've been working with them and I'm super excited to showcase all of them. They all are different. Their one is doing a shell, another one's a full park model and landing on Hunter Land. Others don't have property, but they're gonna, one's gonna travel with it. Another needs to find land and they're gonna build the biggest tiny home that you can possibly legally build, 430 square feet. So there's the whole gambit and I'm super excited to showcase their stories and the case studies. Uh, so I'll be looking for videos on that. And subscribe to this channel because we are gonna get more active here in showcasing what's happening with our Baja trip, with when this thing gets onto the property. Oh, it's gonna be gorgeous because they are gonna give it some love and, and make it you look amazing. So Experience Tiny Homes, you can find us at Facebook, on Instagram and YouTube at Experience Tiny Homes. Bye everyone.